Hi everyone, my name is Melissa, and in this video I'll go over problem of the week number two. As you might have guessed, this is the second iteration of this new initiative that we're hosting at Enterprise DNA, and I'm especially passionate about it, because it provides everyone the chance to get more practice in on a regular basis. Each month, on the first Wednesday, there's a DAX challenge, and on the third Wednesday, there's a Power Query challenge. It's a great opportunity to explore, discover, and learn new things about these languages that you need to leverage inside Power BI. Let me switch to my browser. So on the forum here, you'll find a category on the problem of the week. There it is. And all posts you'll find in this category. Even if you're not a member, it's, it's good to mention, you can still participate in these challenges and you'll find all the details on how to enter in that thread. So this time around, there's been another, another wonderful buzz around the forum. And I want to thank everyone who entered. It's wonderful to see so many people getting involved and getting engaged. So thank you for that. Now the primary focus is all about the process and not so much about the outcome. Just think about that for a second. If you're very successful in breaking down a problem into smaller pieces that you can work through, you'll be able to solve pretty much any problem that you're faced with, right? So last time Brian spoke about a technique called rubber duck debugging. If you missed that, be sure to check out his video. It can help you when you get stuck in these challenges. All right, so let's examine the task. And here we see that we have a messy text file that we need to transform into a proper dimension table. Now, when I look at data like this, for the most part, it's going to be all about text cleaning, removing unwanted characters, trimming, capitalizing words, and so on. But we also need to retrieve all the rows from this stack data and turn it into a single line for each country. I'm calling it stack data because all the field names are repeated in a single column for each country. I don't know about you, but I have some experience in Excel and one of Excel's most powerful features in my view are pivot tables. If I think about pivot tables, they let me view data by a segment. So depending on what you place on the row section, it condenses each occurrence of that segment into a single line. And then you can split that up even further by dragging fields into the column section. So I've created an example of what that looks like. So I'm going to switch to Excel. So here we have pretty much the same data that we had in that text file. And on the next page here, I've created an empty pivot table. Now what I didn't show you is that I have three columns here instead of the two that I already showed you. But I'm going to drag my segment here to the rows. And you can see that that's just an index number. Now column one had the field names, so I'm going to drag that to the column section. And column to had all the field values, select that and turn that into the value section. So we see that pivot tables can't handle text string. It counts them, but it does show that we have a single value for each field. Now let's take a look at that segment that I created. So I'm going to step back to the data and I'm going to unhide my column. And you can see that it's just an index number identifying each of the separate blocks of the data that are still stacked on top of each other. So for me, the key transformation will be a pivot of the data to get it back into that tabular format. Now in the posted solution so far, I've seen other ways of dealing with this. So there are other ways to get to a tabular format than using a pivot action. And they work equally well. So if you're interested in that, then just go to the forum and start exploring. So that about sums it up for my breakdown. Let's go over to Power Query and review my solution. Personally, I think the UI does a great job in writing the bulk of the M code for us. So I tend to design my queries using the user interface as much as I can. And when the query kind of does what I need it to do, then I'll go into the advanced editor and examine the M code 
to see if I can modify it. Let's see what that looks like. This is my base query, if you will, that I built using the user interface. Now, we don't need to go over that in much detail, but you can see that there are a lot of steps in the Applied Steps pane on the right-hand side. Now, that in itself, of course, isn't a problem, and this query will do. But by looking at the steps, you can see that there are a lot of transformations that can kind of be grouped together. So let's open the Advanced Editor. Here we see that this query has 31 steps. Now, I also added some comments to my code. This is the same query containing the 31 steps, but I kind of broke it up into sections. First thing I did was I removed the change type step and I suggest creating a custom function to do all of those text transformation steps. Now, there are a lot of other comments here, of course, but there are two things that I want to highlight in this video. First is that custom function for text cleaning purposes. And the other one, of course, is the pivot step itself in turning this type of data back into a proper tabular format. So let's take a closer look at that. So we're back to the early stages of building out my query where I had all those grouped replace value steps to clean up those text columns, column one and the merged column. Now I added an additional column to this, the custom column. Its sole purpose basically is to build out my custom text cleaning function. And I invoke that on the merged column. That way I don't have to write the function in one go, but I can build it up gradually, one step at a time, adding a new transformation after reviewing the results from the previous step. So let's look at the M code for that text cleaning function. So here you see I have multiple steps. When I built out this text function, I kind of stepped back and forth between the query, looking at the results to see what, what to build out next, what to correct next with this result that performed all the transformations that I needed. Now, some of the M functions that I used here were provided by the user interface when I built my initial query, like the text.trim function. However, other functions were not. And if you're not familiar with them, you can look up all the M functions in the M formula guide online. So let's switch to my browser. So here's the link where you need to go and you will find a section here on Power Query M functions. If you scroll down, you'll find the section on text function and each section starts with an overview. So here's a list of all the text functions inside the Power Query M formula language. So if you're looking for a specific transformation, you can look that up right here. The second part I wanted to highlight is the pivoting of the data itself. So let's take a closer look at that as well. So I started by adding an index and I updated that index to properly segment the blocks of data. And I did that by returning the index number for each line where it had the text country in column one. And then I filled that value down. So then all we need to do is pivot the data itself. So on the transform tab, you'll find pivot column. So with column one selected, select pivot column. It's going to use the column one values as the new column names, and then it wants to know where the values for those field names are. And those are in our merged column. So Power Query guessed that correctly. Now, where Excel can deal with text values, Power Query can, because it has here an advanced option setting. And all we need to do is select don't aggregate and then it can handle text values. So select OK. 
and here we see our data is pivoted. Excellent. Now there's probably more to discover in the solution, right? But it's far too extensive, I think, to cover in this one video. Anyway, this is my final result query. I do hope you've enjoyed this wrap up video. Uh, if you did, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA channel so you don't miss out on any new content. Thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you all in a future Problem of the Week challenge. All the best.